This time we're going to talk about something called microcirculation. And this term means the exchange that occurs between the plasma and the interstitial fluid. And it's called micro because it takes place between capillaries and the interstitial fluid, so it's micro circulation. And we mentioned before in the beginning of these videos that the osmolarity or the exchange that occur is related to a certain kind of particles that is hard to be exchanged between the plasma and the interstitial fluid and we said that these are proteins because they are relatively large molecules and it's hard for them to be transported or to pass from the capillary walls to the interstitial fluid but this is not the only factor that affects the process of microcirculation. We have another factor which is very logical and very important which is the pressure. There is a pressure of blood inside the capillaries and this will of course depend on two factors which is the radius of the capillary and the power or the thrust of the blood throughout the capillary walls. So if we have a capillary with a bigger radius we have a lower pressure if the radius decreased the pressure will be higher so they are inversely proportional. So these are the two factors that affect the microcirculation, the pressure and the proteins. We can name th these factors like this. And um, by the way, both of these factors are found inside the capillaries and in the interstitial area. So if this is the capillary so and this is the interstitial area and the exchange occurs on this side so our two factors will be the pressure inside the capillary and the proteins inside the capillary which affect the osmolarity so we call it oncotic osmotic pressure or colloidal osmotic pressure colloidal because it's related to protein so this that's it pi c and on the other side we will have the pressure of the interstitial fluid this will be like IF would be more to be more specific so the pressure of the interstitial fluid and the oncotic pressure of the interstitial fluid. Now let's see which of these factors will help the process of filtration to occur and which one will help the process of reabsorption to occur. Now what is filtration and what is 
reabsorption. Filtration is when the fluid is filtered from the capillary to the interstitial fluid. So this is filtration. Reabsorption is totally the opposite of this process when the fluid is reabsorbed again inside the capillary. So this is reabsorption. So which of these forces will favor this act? Which of these forces will favor this act? Let's see. For the pressure inside the capillary, if the thrust of blood is very, very strong, more amount of liquid will be found in the capillary at a certain point of time, and according to osmosis, the liquid will go from the capillary outside due to the power of thrust and due to the higher amount of liquid. So, the pressure inside the capillary is actually the most important force that favors filtration. While, on the other hand, the osmotic oncotic pressure or colloidal osmotic pressure, if there is a higher amount of proteins inside the capillary, this will lead to the increase of the concentration. So, accordingly, an increase in the concentration here will not make the liquid get out. On the opposite side, the water or the liquid will go from the interstitial fluid inside because the concentration of the particles here will be higher and the concentration of the fluid here will be higher. So the fluid moves from, or the water moves from, the high concentration of water to the lower concentration of water. So the osmotic oncotic pressure is the main force that favors reabsorption. And these are the most two important forces. The other ones, on the other hand, are not relatively important, but for example, the pressure of the interstitial fluid is very hard to be measured, but it can be useful in such cases like um, pulmonar filtration or pulmonary circulation. and um, it's not as it's not as important as the pressure inside the capillary but of course as a pressure if it increases it will lead the fluid to go in this direction because it affects this side and the thrust here will increase leading the fluid to go to the capillary. So it's pro reabsorption. And finally, the osmotic pressure in the interstitial fluid is not relatively important because, again, it's related to proteins. And from the beginning, we said that it's hard for the proteins to go from this side to that side. And if they got out, they are absorbed by the lymph which are found in this compartment. So the proteins don't stay in this region and so it's not also as important as this force but if they are found here more proteins means more concentration and this favors the movement of the liquid from this side to that side so it's a pro-filtration force. These forces collectively are called Starling forces and they are used in the measurement of the microcirculation with positive and negative values and they are put in an equation that we will talk about in the next time. So, until then, I thank you for watching and see you.